Year 2 subtraction. Year 2 moves, moves forward and builds on what the children have done in Year 1. And again, we're looking at number lines where we can count back, we can also count forward. Number lines could be prompted with the numbers on them, or in this case, as in this case, it might be a blank number line altogether. Referring to the skills learnt in year one, if the gap between the two numbers is very, very large in the way it is here, we have 22 and 5, then we would count back. The children would be encouraged to put the large number at the end of the number line. So we've got 22 and from 22 we need to take away 5. This relates to their addition knowledge in that they would remember in addition that they jump through multiples of 10. In subtraction they're going to use the same skill but this time they're counting back. So the children will be encouraged to count back to the next multiple of 10 underneath 22. Remember a multiple of 10 is a number that ends in 0. The multiple of 10 is 20 and we've taken away 2 from 22 to get to 20. We wanted to take away 5, we've taken away 2 of that 5 so we've got 3 left to take away. 20 take away 3 is 17. So our final answer is 17 because you can see we've taken the 3 and the 2 Together that makes our 5, we've taken our 5 away from 22, but we've done it in two easy jumps using our multiple of 10 to help us. In this example, we've got 23 and 18. These two numbers are very close to each other, unlike the last example where we had 22 and 5, 5 is a lot smaller so we jumped back on the number line. With this one, we've got two numbers that are very close. So in order not to make mistakes, it's easier to put our smaller number on the number line at the start, our larger number at the end, and to count forwards to find the difference. Remembering that when we are taken away, ultimately we are looking for a difference. We're still going to use that multiple of 10 that number that ends in a zero, that is a step higher than the number that we're starting at. But instead of counting back, we're now counting forward, so we're less likely to make any mistakes. To get from 18 to the next number that ends in zero, which is 20, we do a jump of two. To get from 20 to 23, 23, which is our number that we've got to get to, we have just got to add on three. So two add three is five. We have done a whole jump of five, but we split it into two easy jumps. We worked it out that it was a two and then a three, and then we added those jumps together. So jumping forward, we add the jumps. When we're counting back on a number line, we're looking for the number that we end on because our two jumps make the number that we're taking away. So they are different strategies that the children would be taught separately and be also be taught when to apply those. Another strategy that we might use, we could use for this question here, we have 55 take away 23. Again, we're going to put our large number at the end of the number line and we could put our 23 at the start and we could count up using the strategy that we've just used. Another way of doing it is to partition our second number. Our second number we have tens and units. Um, part in partitioning our number we could take away our tens first and then our units to make it easy, knowing that to add and subtract a ten is easier than doing the tens and units all at once. I'm at 55 and I want to take away two tens. Some children will be able to do that straight away. Other children may need to take away one lot of 10. 55 take away 10 is 45. Taking away 10 is nice and easy. I've taken away one 10. I want to take away another 10. 45 take away 10 is 35. So, so far I've taken away my two tens. I've now got three units to take away. Again, different abilities in children could apply here and some children might decide to do one, two, three to get to their final answer. 
35 take away 3 is 32. So 55 take away 23 is 32. And we did this using a number line but by partitioning that second number to make it easy for us. The same question, we could partition this without using a number line. To do this, we look at our tens and units in each of the numbers and we check that our units here are smaller than our units here. They are, so this is a number sentence that I can use the partitioning method for. And I'm going to start by taking away my tens. I've got five tens and I want to take away a number that has two tens in it. 50 take away 20 is 30. I've taken away my tens. And now I want to take away my units. I've got five units in my first number and three units in my second number. Five take away three is two. I have taken away my tens, I've taken away my units and I've split my numbers. Now I need to put my numbers back together again to get my final answer. So here we do actually add. 30 add 2 is 32. But it's like we have taken the numbers apart and now we've got to put them back together again. So our final answer is 32. And that's another strategy that the children can use. 48 take away 23. This is another example where we could use partitioning. We've got our tens and our units and our tens and our units. I'm going to take away my tens first. 40 take away 20 is 20. And then I've got my units. 8 take away 3 is 5. We've split up our tens and our units. We've now got to put them back together. So 20 add 5 is 25 and that gives us our final answer. All of these strategies the children would have lots of practice on and get confident with to the point where they would then be given word problems or number sentences where they chose which method they wanted to use, the method that works best for them or for the number sentence they're looking at. One other type of question is a rounding and adjusting question that the children will have used in addition. This is 45 take away 9. 9 is very nearly 10 and we know that taking away 10 is nice and easy. So we're going to start with 45 and we always start with our large number at the right hand side because it's the bigger number and we want to take away 10. We're taking away 10 because that's an easy jump to do. 45 take away 10 is 35. We've taken away 10, we only needed to take away 9. So we've taken away one extra. We've now got to add that extra one back on. So 35 add that extra one gives us 36. So 45 take away 9 is 36. We could also use this skill in taking away 11 and if we could because then we could take away 10 and then we could take away an extra one so that we would have taken away 11 altogether. We don't have to use a number line for it so using exactly the same number sentence we can say well 45 take away 10 is 35 I've then got to add that extra one back on because I've taken away 10 and I only need to take away 9 and I can say 35 add that extra one equals 36. So my final answer would be 36, exactly the same as when I used the number line. Some children find it easier to use it in um, jottings in the way that we have here in front of us, others find it easier to use the number line. Also in year two, the children need to recognise that numbers can be represented by symbols or shapes. Here we have a triangle in the place of a number in a number sentence. 13 take away something equals 9. The children would be encouraged to start at 9 
and work out what they needed to add on to it to get to 13. And to recognise that, well, actually, 13 take away 4 gets them to 9. In a similar way, they might be given a different number in the number sentence that is missing. And they would use the same strategy of recognising that the triangle is in place of a number. And in this one, they would think about, well, they've taken away something to get to 9. So if they can add that, they've taken away 4, sorry, to get to 9. If they can add that 4 back onto 9, they can find their answer. And here the answer would be 13.